Good evening and welcome to the special meeting of the Transportation Advisory Board. My name is Cynthia Kress. I'm currently serving as chair of this board. Uh, I would like to start by recognizing that we have an alternate who's promoted to a regular member, Jerry, this evening. Um, and the other thing to mention is that this is a special meeting because it's not our normal time slot and then we won't have uh, an August meeting at the regular third week, uh, Thursday, uh, third Thursday rather. Um, and I don't have any other. Oh, I also just wanted to say the thank you to the staff um, for getting this together. I know it was a quick turnaround. And thank you to all the town members for carving out this Thursday evening, which is not our normal time. So I think it was a productive meeting last time, and I uh, appreciate you guys uh, the flexibility that everybody had to provide to make this happen. So thank you. Um, and with that, I will just ask if there are any public comments. Do we know, is anybody here? I do not see anyone, but I will ask that if you would like to make a public comment, use the phone number because the link is not currently working right now. So if we have anybody come on, then we can go ahead and reopen public comments. But hearing no public comment at this time, we'll go ahead and close that and we'll move on to regular business. We just have one item on the agenda this evening and it is back to our shuttle, I guess one, yeah, one regular item, uh, item of regular business. And before we do that, I was just gonna share a little bit about how I was planning for this meeting, uh, Julie and I and staff talked a little bit, how this will go. So it's, just, it's one item on the agenda, but to subdivide that, There'll be a presentation, um, and I'm hoping you can really dive into the updates so we all really understand the significance of the updates. Um, and then what we didn't do last time, which we had all decided and um, would be really helpful, is to have a discussion about the criteria. So we want to make sure um, after the presentation, um, we'll go ahead and talk about first if there are any missing criteria. I personally have one that I wanted to, to float, and we can have a discussion about whether we think there's any whether we as a group think there should be criteria added. And then we'd like to do an exercise and have a discussion about the importance of the criteria, whether there's any weighting or ranking that we think is um, important. And we're not gonna have time to develop like a robust qualitative, you know, weighted ranking, but just a um, general feeling about what we think is the most important. And I'm gonna ask us to do some scribbling of your notes um, during that time because I think it encourages people to remember what they thought before they start hearing what other people think. And I just, one of the goals is to really, you know, we want to hear what each and every one of you has to say and then how also what you might have to say after hearing what someone else has to say. And so to um, help with that, we'll have an exercise for that ranking where we actually write that down. And then hopefully um, we can spend the last 20 minutes or so like actually formulating a recommendation and if we don't have to figure it out word for word we just you know hopefully if we have consensus great if we don't have consensus and we want to capture you know the, the discussion and the essence of where we might agree or disagree um and i want to say one more thing about the presentation um we do even though we only have one item tonight we do have a lot to get through so go ahead and ask questions as you go but let's try to stay on the topic as much as possible. I think we were all super interested in the routes last time and it was a good, it was important, but it, it definitely took some more time and got us a little bit off the main point, although I think it's uh, hard to get us to stop talking about, about, about routes, metro routes. But uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to John. Was there any other opening comment that you wanted to make? Yeah. Did I miss anything, Isabel? No. Okay. I should ask you, did I miss anything? I think we're good great thank you uh, cynthia that was great uh so yeah let's talk about shuttles again part two um, i'm john larson friend i'm the transportation program coordinator and we'll be talking about the transit shuttle options for squawk and talus and continuing on that conversation uh, our purpose is the same as last time to present the most viable options for a shuttle service for the squawk and talus neighborhoods to connect to the transit center and other major but we have updates. Actually, pretty exciting. So, um, the direction needed has changed a little bit. Um, 
I was able to meet with Metro last week, and there are a few uh, updates for that. So I would love uh, if you were all would um, evaluate the effects of those new Metro updates. Um, and then any uh, changes to the evaluation criteria, like we did last time, but didn't get to. So we'll be going through that criteria phase and then uh, hopefully make a collective or mostly collective uh, recommendation as to which option or options to pursue. So I'm going to park it unintended uh, on, this, <laughs> on this slide to provide those updates. Um, so first of all, uh, you all asked for some specific data points, and I was able to get some of them. I think, yeah, at least some of them. Um, so first you asked for, so you asked for the uh, number of households in the two neighborhoods, the density numbers, uh, demographics, and household values. So we don't have much neighborhood specific data, unfortunately. Our GIS mapping department supplied me with a few neighborhood specific data points from 2018, so it is outdated by four years, uh, including the number of housing units and density. But beyond that, I had to use census block data, which it isn't specific by neighborhood. Some of these census blocks go way out, out outside of town and kind of go all over the place. So just keep that in mind, but it'll get us kind of in the ballpark of, of, the, of the numbers that we need. So first of all, the number of households, um, we don't have actual households, but we have, do have a number of units. So we'll go with that. So with Squawk, and this is 2018 numbers, there were 1,608 housing units. And in Talus, there were 1,578 housing units. By the way, I'm going to be throwing a bunch of numbers at you. Feel free to write them down, and I can also supply them afterwards. Um, that is, those are 2018 numbers, and I've been assured by our GIS folks that there are more, but not that much more. So it's it's probably statistically somewhat insignificant. Um, can you say this again? Oh yeah, of course, uh, 1,608 housing units in Squawk and 1,578 in Talos. Uh, for density, Squawk has a density of 4.14 people per acre. So that is very, very low. So not dense whatsoever. Talos has 13.92 people per acre, which is moderate, especially for a, a smaller city like this one. So getting into the demographic side of things, uh, I was able to pull some census data. I used the 2020 uh, census data. Again, the block groups don't follow the neighborhoods exactly, but I kind of cobbled it together. So these are very rough numbers. They do not specifically reflect the neighborhoods, but they'll give us kind of a ballpark. So for Squawk, here's some more numbers, 92% uh, white, 1% black, 1% Native American, 10% Asian, 2% other, 11% uh, two or more races. And these are, of course, self, uh, self-reported through the census. Talus, much more diverse, 58% white, 2% black, 0% Native American, 26% Asian, 2% other, and 11% uh, two races or more. For household value, so we don't have the income data. We don't have it more specifically than the census tract level. And census tract are even worse than, than the uh, block level because they, I think part of Old Town is a part of the Squawk Mountain. It's kind of all over the place. Uh, we do know that the poverty level in uh, the Squawk neighborhood is between 12.5% and 14.2%, which is rather high. And then the uh, Talus poverty level is roughly 2%, so pretty low. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then I did, I did ask for housing uh, value, but uh, the GIS folks uh, at the city said housing value is really unreliable as a metric. Uh, for example, a couple may have bought a house decades ago for like 20000 but now they're on a fixed income and they don't really know. Like, even though their house is worth more, that doesn't actually reflect their economic situation. Any questions on that before I move on? Cool. Um, 
And then I went back through the recording to, and I captured all of your questions that I wasn't able to, to provide an answer to. So I, I was able to go and find all of those. Uh, touching on the buses, because <laughs> I know there were a lot of questions about that. Uh, there were specifically questions about Route 214 and 271. So I just went through the new system and made a list. Um, so there were eight routes and are currently, well, I guess two of them out there, so seven. But originally there were eight routes running throughout Issaquah. That's been consolidated down to five with, uh, with asterisks. Asterisk. I can't say that word, but uh, so the new routes are the 203, that was that orange line that I showed you that will kind of act like the metro, uh, the, the new link light rail-ish. There's the 215, which will be Mercer Island to North Bend, so it'll run right through, uh, through the transit centers. Uh, continuing on, there will be the 554. That'll be adjusted to Bellevue to Highlands. And then on peak, it'll also run up to Redmond. So keep that in mind. Uh, 218 is Mercer to Highlands, and that will be peak only. So that's a change. I believe it was all the time before. And 269, which is Mercer to Highlands, uh, and that's kind of via the downtown, and then Redmond uh, on peak hours as well. So that means 200, 208, 214, 216, 217, 219, 271, and 255 are all good to go. Yeah. And that's uh, that kind of comes back to what we were talking about before, you know, frequency over um, coverage, but really consolidating down into those specific routes to create express lines throughout uh, this problem. There's also a question about the types of buses. Um, so all buses across the county will be 35 feet foot articulated or longer. So all those 30 foot coaches, so the ones that, uh, that used to run 200, those are no longer going to be a part of this loop whatsoever. 20 so, footers. Yeah, it, oh, 20, yes. Um, everything's going to be 35 feet or longer, which does affect where the buses can go from this place. That's come up in other work that I've been doing. Um, another question, does the city fund bus routes? Not currently, but there, there was, uh, Route 200 was funded by the city uh, in that we paid for uh, the fares, basically, or the fare box. And uh, that effectively made uh, Route 200 free. And that, and we roughly spent around 45,000 a year. Uh, we're not quite sure on that number. We're still looking for it. It's kind of buried in documents. So, uh, so we're still looking for that. Did you say 45,000? 45,000. Okay. I'm uh, looking at, it was over 400,000 a year okay. to run the 200 Yes. all year long. Was over four hundred thousand dollars. The city had to uh, do the input. Okay. Yeah. Oh, for, from the city it was for. From the city, the okay. city paid uh, four hundred thousand dollars a year okay. for several years until the two hundred eight replaced the two hundred. Okay. It's kind of the same road in downtown is but then they, since the two hundred fifteen dropped off, the two hundred eight then serviced. Uh, High point and then went up to Snoqualmie Ridge and back down into Snoqualmie. Oh, okay. Okay. So that okay. To the outlet mall in North Bend. Yeah. Yeah. But the 200 was the, the workhorse. Okay. I I intend to keep looking for that specific number. Excuse me. It was for, it, it was, trust me, uh, it, it uh, was uh, over 400,000 because I was in several meetings where that figure came up. Okay. Uh, we might talk after. <laughs> I want to be able to find that. Um, someone also asked at one point what the city's expectations of return on investment is. And uh, so as, uh, as a staff, we've decided uh, the pilot project that provides first mile, last mile service to the Squawk and the Talos neighborhoods, which may turn into a permanent service in the future. That is the return on investment that we're looking for. May turn into what? I didn't hear that. May turn into a permanent service. So to do a pilot to yeah, and move into a hopefully permanent. Uh, and then there's also the question of can we talk to Metro about subsidizing a service to, to expedite a partnership with them? I'm going to address that now with the Metro update because that does come into it. So uh, looking at Metro, I was able to meet with Metro last week. Uh, I was expecting it to be a purely informational chat. 
uh, it turned out to be uh, a little bit more, and they might be interested in talking sooner than we think. Uh, I was able to talk to Metro On Demand, so they run those uh, mm -hmm. on demand shuttles throughout the area. So they, Metro On Demand has recently entered uh, a request for proposal RFP phase, uh, basically consolidate all of their on demand services under one provider. So they are in the midst of putting out the call to providers to basically bring in all these systems into uh, one, under one umbrella. Um, so right now, us asking these questions is perfect because it, they're at least open to talking to us again about, well, what could that look like? What are you proposing as the city? Is that feasible for us? Is it economical for us? So moving on to that next slide, so the one thing that I updated on this slide was uh, before I said that the project was finalized. That is not true. Uh, so during the study phase in 2019, they found that even though Talus had density, uh, the streets proved an issue for the vehicles that they wanted to run. Uh, and Squawk's lack of density was a big question. Uh, and, and both locations brought up questions about whether the vehicles would add, uh, add to and now alleviate traffic issues. So there, yeah. Um, so based on those findings at, at the red point here, uh, Metro was hesitant to move forward and we, they were about to reevaluate the whole thing. Right? They told them, go back to the drawing board, conduct more te testing and analysis to see if this is this could be a thing. And then COVID hit and the budgeting stuff happened and they, they kind of got rid of it all. Anybody, any questions on that history? And Curious, maybe we shouldn't take up the time for this, but what do you mean by the, the buses couldn't go on the streets where the buses could be too long? I think that yeah, it was like the way the way things are shaped and the corners and so, so more the technical up there were not designed. Correct. Correct. Yeah. There's so for, for garbage them. trucks or <laughs> so if you take a sixty footer, perfect example is the traffic circle over by Target. That yeah. Roundabout. Yeah, that's exactly just watch it. <laughs> yeah, just stand back and stand fun. there and watch it, and you'll see it go up and over that traffic circle whenever it makes that turn. You can't, you cannot do that with a 60 footer. You can barely do that with a 40 footer or 30 footer. Yeah. So that's a given, and that's why they built that traffic circle that way, so that they didn't have to worry about. And Metro is not the only one because you get that with. Uh, 53 footers, big trucks that go through there all the time. Yeah. It would, it would, a 60 footer would tear up a neighborhood like Tavis. It would not be able to do the corners, which means it's going to ride the curb, which does damage to tires, and it also does damage to those curbs and yeah. anything else that gets in its way. But how do they do garbage up there? Uh, that's all, that's a smaller truck. That's, that's a 28 footer to a 40 footer with a truck. Garbage trucks, I don't think, are that long. And if they were to pursue a shuttle, theoretically it could be shorter, but they they still express, like, uh, we don't know exactly what we're doing, so please go back and reevaluate to see exactly what would okay. work. Okay. And more importantly, it was the density issue of is this even worth running? So, uh, tell us and spot. Less Talus, more Squawk, but Talus is a bit too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me move on to the next slide here. Oh, so of course we have our options that we're looking at, same as last time, uh, waiting for Metro to relaunch their pilot programs to pursue and pursue a King County run shuttle, create and implement a city funded third party run shuttle, and partner with Uber and or Lyft on a subsidized ride share service. So. Just, to read, just so you remember. And then we have some updates here as well. Um, as you can see, I've updated a couple of pieces here, and I'll run through those real quickly. So uh, I know I said that uh, the, the cost of the city per year is zero for, the, for a metro uh, option. That's not necessarily true. And now we know. So the uh, Right now, local on-demand services throughout the county are funded in a variety of ways, uh, including there are fully metro-funded uh, on-demand. 
Uh, there are grants, there are fully city funded uh, on demand, and there's also city subsidized options. So they kind of just said, here, there are a whole bunch of ways you could do this, not, and it won't necessarily be zero. So just to take that into account. Uh, so Metro is running their program uh, between 45 and $88 per hour. Yeah. So speaking of grants, we had this conversation, I think, a year ago, a while ago, about how the city approaches grants. And one of the things that was said was basically that they do something like periodically see what's available. Is there Are there things that we should be looking at as a way to get a higher return on our investment? I would say the answer to that is we can always look for more ways to, to get money for stuff like this. Um, we are we have entered an interesting time federally. Uh, now there's a little bit more federal dollars. It's obviously it's every city in the United States, you know, <laughs> buying for these dollars. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that is something that we we as staff are always looking for more ways to fund more things because the existing well, obviously, it's not sufficient to, to, to do every project the way we want them to do. Um, so that, that's another reason why, uh, same, same on the county level, they also don't have unlimited funds to do everything. So, um, great question. Uh, okay, so um, Metro is running their programs between $45 and $88 per hour, which if you remember from last time, is substantially lower than the private shuttles that we were looking at. And that is because they place such a high value on ridership and density. So that does play into it. Um, so the more riders, the less overall cost. So they're trying to recapture some of the costs and that's what brings down that, that amount. And you probably don't know what limit of density they're looking at. Uh, not at the moment, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they kind of gave me a general, and I, I, I'll include some of the slides that they, they showed me, but uh, I don't have any specific numbers that are, you know, what they're looking at. I know they're, they're concerned. <laughs> like it's concerned. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And that's why they went back to the drawing board before. Do you know what the density of, like, the downtown central business district is? I actually didn't look at that, no. Um, that's a great question. Okay, the other, the other thing that has changed is the timeline. As you can see, it's now 2023, not 2026. Uh, so, uh, so Metro has an ideal slash aggressive, aggressive timeline for switching their system to a, the one provider uh, as early as 2023. They know it's aggressive, who knows if it'll actually happen that quickly. Uh, but that means if Metro deems our proposed project as viable, the timeline could hypothetically move up to late 2023, early 2024. Hypothetically, grain of salt, all of the metaphors, all of the sayings. Perfect world. Perfect <laughs> world, exactly. But we must be viable. Get, yes, so it all comes back to that. Um, and then the other, so the, the final thing is uh, talking about criteria. Some of the criteria Metro uses are different than the ones we proposed, which I think is very important. If we're going to be evaluating this, we should probably take their criteria into account as well, since uh, they would be the ones that would make the ultimate decision on that first option, which you all expressed interest in last time. Um, and I will expand on that uh, in the next slides here. So I screenshotted a couple of their slides for, for you so that we could take a look at it. Um, so this is their, this is the way that they analyze their, uh, their on-demand uh, programs. So going into a uh, potential program is the evaluation process. And they look at productivity, efficiency, and equity. And then prioritization is kind of their ongoing analysis during the pilot programs that they run. So they look at equity, serving those who need, you know, is it serving those who need access the most? Uh, partnership, are there local opportunities? Is there local funding? Is there you know, all of those different uh, different opportunities to leverage those resources? Access, does the new service provide, uh, you know, does it help people reach their jobs and community access, which, which is the goal of ours, so that's good. And then the big one here, density. Uh, so does it serve areas with adequate ridership? 
and without high quality and without high quality fixed route service, which we we do uh, not have the high quality fixed route service to the neighborhoods, but the density thing might prove an issue. And then I also wanted to show show you all this. It's a little small up there. I apologize, uh, but this is the uh, this is their evaluation and decision making tree. Um, so they you know they go through the identify identify the new pro project, develop the pilot service, implement the pilot pilot area decision. And they did let me know that all of their pilots that they are running, all their systems, technically are sort of where's my mouse sort of in this area right. They haven't, none of their pilots have actually reached the, are we going to keep this stage yet? So just to note that. So then um, some notes on what they told me about kind of moving forward. So Metro will conduct an analysis of Squawk Mountain and Talus this month uh, to measure how feasible a program might be. Uh, so uh, these will take uh, the criteria that they have and use updated analysis technology to do some high level analysis. So um, in the last in the last few years, these sorts of technologies to analyze service areas has it's increased so much. Um, so they are able to go in and kind of do an initial analysis. It's not on the ground necessarily, but they are able to go in and kind of pop things in and see what the feasibility using their various different factors. Uh, would uh, to, to kind of analyze what it might look like. And this is this is important. So they stress that Metro's openness to talking about an on-demand program does not mean it's a sure thing in any way, but they are willing to put in some time the next month uh, to do some initial uh, feasibility analysis. So that's kind of what they've committed to is just let's talk, basically. Um, so we, as, as the expert in the room, I, I want to give you my opinion on this uh, after the chat. So a metro service might be a long shot, um, and I think it'll be kind of an uphill battle to convince them. That's, that's my opinion. Um, since density is a metric they use, and Squawk has such a low density, uh, we have to be aware that there is a good chance that metro says no. Um, so I think from, from my end of things, uh, I hope that tonight we can uh, kind of make sure to have a plan B. Um, so what if Metro, you know, like Metro, great. What if that, like, let's partner with them, that'd be wonderful. But if Metro becomes not an option, what should we do? And that's kind of, uh, that's kind of where I'll leave it, I think, at this point. Um, and we can start having, having that discussion about all these changes. I think they're very exciting. I think there's a lot of opportunity, but um, I do want to keep the, the realistic expectations on the table as well. So, any questions? So, a few questions. Okay. <laughs> uh, probably some that can't be answered tonight, but I would love to see a visual map of the distance of you know people within the city from the nearest public transit. Okay. Yeah. So, like, you know. People in the far end of Squawk Mountain are obviously going to be a lot further, but I don't actually know. Do some parts of the business district have? Are, is there a route that actually goes right by it, or are there going to be zones that we're going to see in there? I just be interesting to see what that actual difference is. Yeah, um, you're talking about like a heat map or yeah, yeah. Mike, did you have one bus away? Like that? This is an awkward time. Talk about my use of bus app. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's that might, very poor. So that might have there's some this of thing what called my wife who calls me with the dog. So, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to, to ask about. So you said earlier the return on investment is the service, right? That that's the return, right? It's not a we're trying to get a zero, achieve a zero cost service. Okay. So I get that. But there is a bit of a question of, yeah, uh, if Metro thinks it's not a good idea, why do we think it is a good idea? Likewise, exactly. if Metro thinks it's not a good idea, is providing that service, is, is there some other option with Metro to say, you know what, we're just going to pay you to do it. 
because I would, I'd be a little surprised that there's a cheaper option than they, they already manage everything than to just expand what they do. They may go, well, the return doesn't make sense for us because we have a total budget, but we're saying, hey, we want to spend money anyway. We want to do it anyways. We should take this check to go do it. Well, I think it's uh, more of a local, you know, they're more of a regional agency. So what they're looking at is regional. And so we're thinking, you know, we want a local look at this. Then that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, trying to get at with them um, if that if we do pursue that option um, if that makes sense yes but it seems like then we're sort of creating this city of this bus service that already exists and I don't know about it There's, you know I, metro is meant to cover the localities not just the unincorporated <laughs> So there, there's a couple of things. Bellevue tried this with uh, several different votes that they threw in. And let me let me use the term here so you understand. Half of those buses that you rent, the other half are trip. Two fourteens of trip. Two fifteens of trip. By trip, they run in the morning. They run in the afternoon. So half of those are trippers to take the commuters in. So what are we looking at as far as equity for those runs? You're, you're basically running commuters to and from Seattle. So, um, for the most part, transit center. 214 depth, they're a wonderful bus. I drove it. Go straight into Seattle. There's no stops. Straight out to Issaquah. No stops. People love that. What are we looking as far as equity for those buses and what they serve? Because when you talk about density, uh, the only density they're going to have is freeway and uh, downtown Seattle streets and our transit center. Very little here. If we're adding equity, we're trying to get those who cannot afford or have transportation to make it so that they can get to and from work, considering that sincere, correct? I kind of agree with Micah in that it seems to me we're trying to create to offer that equity and offer that inclusion to everybody in the city of Issaquah, it's going to be very expensive to the city. We can't make it expensive to the writer because the writer isn't going to want to pay for another system, especially if they know that eventually Metro is going to take care of that gap, if they do. I think that if no one else has any questions, I think that's actually a natural. I was just going to say, yeah, this <laughs> read my mind. So, um, yeah, do we, before we move along to the next step, because I think we'll kind of get at some of this, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure you don't have, is anybody having more questions for him about the material? I just have to ask it. Please. I'm pretty sure I know what the answer is, but there's no option of, because so it, uh, Talos has more density than Squawk. And that's not an option from the city or what the city is wanting to peel off the day. Like, say, like, I was we'll wondering the same the thing. Density, we'll just serve Talos. That's a good question. Is, is that a valid, because I was just wondering if this, if we might come to that same. I'm wondering, wondering if that is more it's like, an, ethnically diverse and it's just more dense. It's well, a, it's an yeah, interesting, but, oh, sorry. Yeah, but then the poverty level, right, right, it's, right. Plot yeah. is higher. Yeah. And it's because older people probably mm -hmm. live there with fixed incomes. Mm -hmm. like and I, were saying. I would say at this point, uh, what we're looking at is a group, uh, Talos and Squawk, only because that is what the council direction, city council direction was to get us to this point. Could that change down the line? Possibly. Could that be something 
we come to you all come to a conclusion on and add to your recommendation, possibly. Um, but at this point, we'll, let's just safely say it's grouped and, and evaluated. From there. That sounds reasonable. Cool. For the places that have done the Uber and this partnership, uh, do we have more information on like people that took it? Did they take it and they they used to take a bus and they just were like, well, I'd rather take an Uber. And they literally were just substituting a bus, for, an Uber for a bus. Or, you know, is it people that had a car and just wanted to be able to, I don't know, get a drink on the, before they came home from work? Or was it actually solving a transportation gap? I think that's a, it, a, it's a really hard thing to measure. Um, if you, if we asked, I think yeah. that same question and did you know, you're like, we don't to, know, but what's did that? you ask that to Metro? We asked it to Uber, Uber and Lyft. I can tell you who's going to have the figures because I know who ran those. Right. Hopefully. Okay. Hopefully oh, yeah. paid for those small vans to run those different shuttles. And basically what they were is very close to on demand where you pick up the phone, come to the house, pick them up. They have two or three, they get two or three in the neighborhood down to the transit center drop, same thing going home. They were all, they were basically, you can't call them anything but on demand. It wasn't a scheduled route. It was, they went to the house to pick them up. And uh, there were at least three of those. Uh, Metro did not furnish the drivers. They did not furnish the vans. Hopefully did. Yeah. And they were ran, they ran just like dark. And they lasted, I don't even think six months. Each one of them. And they went away. They went away because there wasn't enough There demand. wasn't enough ridership. There wasn't, and it was, trust me, they did enough advertising to get the information out there. There just wasn't the demand to take care of. So they had the work. And they could use their ORCA cards. Mm -hmm. So that was a real advantage. But hopefully it has that data. Stacy Haber knows that I know that hopefully it has that data. So you could get that data and how long it lasted and what they covered. That one area that I'm familiar with probably would equate to Talos. This is the Talos is probably problem. smaller than that area that they were providing at. Okay. Yeah, and this is the second time in 24 hours that Hopelink has come across my radar, so I really yeah. need to, to do that. So I'll take it as a sign. They don't, they have not created the sources. To go back to your original question about uh, Uber Lyft and their their kind of service. Um, I believe the the service that they had in Arizona, which I think I described last time, that had the uh, transit to anywhere in the city and back for for you know two dollars or zero. Um, that replaced a shuttle service that they were running for cost. Uh, so that that doesn't quite answer the question, but it did in that instance take over a an actual service. Um, I don't know exactly yeah. how it works, but I guess kind of the question is a little bit more, and I almost certain we won't know. Um, but whether the people that took Uber previously were taking the shuttle, are, are you just serving a completely different population? Yeah, short of uh, surveying, surveying every person who ever took every <laughs> mode and switch and to see if they switched, it, it's a really hard thing to know. Um, it, yeah, it comes up in transportation planning all the time. We wish we had that information. Yeah. So, can we turn to criteria? Are you guys ready for that? Um, I think the first thing. I'd like to know is, does anybody think there's, so yeah, if you leave that slide up there, because that's the criteria. Um, 
uh, is there anything missing? I know these, the staff spent a lot of time with this before it ever came to the town. Um, and so I think they're pretty comfortable with it, but I wanted to know, uh, the first thing I wanted to find out was anybody think there's anything missing? And I know that question was put forth uh, last time, but we didn't get to the answer. We didn't get a chance to answer it. Erica, you look like you have something to say. This yeah. can't be just too micro of a project, but I don't think like any project is too small, but since it is also in the mobility master plan, should we add sustainability to this? Or is that just a given that no matter what we do, they're all going to have the same baseline of eco friendliness? Hmm. I what do you know, mean by sustainability? Uh, mean that I just like, are we assuming these are electric shuttles or two? Yeah, I won't. That I don't even know what I mean. But okay, <laughs> uh, less use of the yeah, less yeah. Of yeah. use of single, single drivers. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, so I guess in general, less use this of single drivers. project itself is get because yeah, it's to get single drivers off the road. But is each individual option have more? more or less to it. I wonder if I feel like all the factors put together once we rank them up, mm -hmm. like whichever one allows more single occupancy vehicles to be taken off the road, that's generally going to be the most eco friendly one. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, but like the the bus is very the per passenger eco friendliness is very dependent on the the ridership. Mm -hmm. So because we don't know that, you know, it could be that if the ridership is really low, Uber Lyft is gonna be the best. Because you're not having and driving an empty bus around, whether it's electric or not. Uh, but if it's high, then that would be the worst option. So I think without knowing that, I don't know how we could evaluate it. Well, oh, point. Oh, and I think the came up last time costs in terms of um, Cost to city per year and per ride would be something for consider. Right, because that number without without um, knowing rider. per ride. Per yeah, ride per or rider. Per rider. Because per, per ride, I would assume a bus taking ten people is one. Uh, is it one ride? Do you mean rider? Like if the bus takes ten people, do you mean the cost per person on that bus? It should be rider. Maybe. So it's cost per city per year per rider. Right? Just cost to user per year, just per per cost to city. I don't know. I feel like the ridership question is a little bit vague because again all of these mm -hmm. are put together are successfully mixed then the, the ridership is going to be high so i'm not sure the ridership just seems a little bit vague and two patches is it possible i i think that the i think it's an interesting question but i think it doesn't we don't have any information so we can't use it as a criteria an evaluation criteria but what i am wondering is something that maybe we're getting at a little bit not with the sustainable but well in some ways the same like like our judgment of likelihood of like uptake, like whether people would use it. Like it seems to me that people will be, a subset of the population would be very likely to use Uber or Lyft. And so, I mean, we'd have to, have, without having the answer, having an evaluation criteria is not useful, but do, are we, are we wondering if there's a, a criteria that says likelihood of of use. So field, is that already captured? No, it's not. So feel the dreams that if yes. you build it, will they come? And and which and it's maybe subjective, we don't have data, but like do we think these are all equal on that front? Well and if the shuttle with the metro option is well that's just a pilot. Like even if we get this pilot, that pilot would go away unless like somehow we just are like the bus is packed with the gills and everyone is really stoked like to have the struggle i don't know but like, is it worse to have a pilot and it goes away the pilot i don't, I don't think so but i think that's captured the scale 
maybe. But I mean, I'm not trying to talk you. No, no, that makes sense. sense. I didn't know like the scalability also meant like, can you build it expand it or up? Or, but I guess that would be expanding it. It's just making it permanent. But yeah. I guess so. Yes, yeah, so yeah. time, both time and and spinning capacity. Pilot goes away. I mean, that's sort of an answer to that question I had earlier, which is, are you creating a service there's actually demand for, and why are we better judges than that than Metro? And, and the pilot that was approved before was the 200 was going to go up and do Talus. That was a pilot. And they even considered doing Squawk. The 200 was free just to see if they could get the ridership because for me ridership is density if you get the ridership which is the density to support the operation uh, they'll continue the operation it would have cost the city more not the rider because the 200 was free and then the pandemic hit and it all went away. And that's so the pilot was never tested. You know, I don't even think we need to develop the criteria anymore because it's we know Metro is ruled out. We know that the shuttle third party is awfully expensive. So really the only alternative is that Uber lift. Uh, that that's the way I see it. So uh, I so I think the only thing left to do is to pull the residents of Palace and Splat to see who would use it. So I, and, I've and already you, made up my mind and that's the way I see it, especially and, since Metro and, is, is just, you know, um, you know, they kind of already said that we're not dense enough and it's, it's pretty highly not likely but, that they would pursue it. Well, 200, the 200 carried a lot of people. It carried, that's where you got your activity was with the 200 because you got people who could not afford to carry, take the bus to include students in Mesequa High School because that was specifically put in there so that those kids could get to and from school that lived around and couldn't take the schools. Uh, you get your density there. Again, it costs the city $400,000, $400,000 plus to operate that service year round. Two buses, morning and then an afternoon, and it was straight through. One, one bus relieved the other, and it was a van. It wasn't an hour. But that's how, and I'm beginning to think the same, the same thing, Jerry. I, <clears throat> What are we getting if we go with Uber Lyft? What, what are you getting? And will you even have the drivers out here to do? That's a huge question. Will you have them? I can tell you right now, they're, they're, uh, they're doing everything they can to break even in Seattle, let alone come to a suburb and uh, do this. All right, I'm kind of stubborn. I'm going to say, just, just humor me for a minute. Let's stick with the plan, and we, we can we'll go through it quickly. I'm not hearing anything that is new. We kind of bounced around some ideas. Staff spent a lot of time with the criteria. Are we more or less, do you have a criteria? The first thing I want to share that is new, it's not on the criteria. You, you can tell me now. I don't know what it is, so I don't know. <laughs> so I, I have very serious concerns about going down the Uber Lyft partnership option. And right? I think Can that I the criteria, but I think when I you talk about later. the criteria, yeah. it will help us understand because I, I feel like I feel like without talking about the criteria, we don't have an understanding of why people think what they think. And I know you're gonna tell us why you think what they what you think, but I feel like we should talk about the criteria that we think is most important. Um but I, I can't Stan's no, not I'm, hearing what I'm you have to say, so go ahead and I'm say serious. it. I'm serious, I'm happy to pull it for later. Unless you think it is super... I think it's a little relevant to the criteria, but it's not directly to the criteria. Okay, <laughs> so 
talk about surveys, you know, if you, if you survey people and you ask them, people that are going to respond to the survey especially, if you ask them, would you like a near free or free Uber option? Who's going to say no? <laughs> so sure. they're going to say yes. And then if you implement it, because they're not comparable, you're going to create a situation where every pot, everyone else in this world is going to go, I demand an Uber and Lyft service. Why does, why does Squawk Mountain get Uber and Lyft to go to pick them up from their home? And then the whole city does it because we have no other option or we cancel it and then we did this. And then all of a sudden the whole city is just subsidizing a private company. But that might be council's problem. Okay. I, I, yeah. I would agree, but they're asking our <laughs> recommendation, and so I mean, our recommendation is not our. My recommendation would be that's not an option. I would not recommend we go down the path of implementing Uber Lyft partnership because of that, and tying it into the criteria. This is where I just don't think that these are comparable options because they're providing such different services. And that's not really in the criteria, but it's sort of more a description than something you can just quantify the criteria. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. So um, I think that what we should do, and if we use our time wisely, we can capture some of this, and that can get transmitted to council. And that is that we have serious concerns about that. And I actually thought that I had a criteria to add, and I realized it's not really a criteria to compare them. It's a criteria that gets at that is this. Um, you know, is this, and the one thing that I think is important, I actually, I'm going to stick to the rules here, we're not talk about the criteria, but um, I do think this density thing is a huge issue. And um, I think that uh, one thing, I mean, there's probably leases all over is a quad that had four people per acre. Um, and then there's probably other newer neighborhoods that have 15 people per acre. And so I think that may be those are, those are two different things. The other thing I think is not entirely clear to me, I know you talked about the first last mile, but in this whole discussion, when it was introduced, it wasn't always first and last miles, also um, just getting to downtown. And I think that those are two very different objectives. And I think that if we narrow the objective, it might be a little easier to, and we, so, so I think to me, um, the idea of first and last mile is an entirely different discussion than if you were just trying to get people to circulate through Issaquah. And I think there are a lot of other benefits that could help get at your question. Because if you get more people off the road, everybody benefits. And if you're talking about first and last mile and people are no longer driving their car all the way into Seattle because they don't want to get on, you know, they, they can't do that first and last mile, then that is something that might seem unfair. And yet, if you're getting people if you're actually successful and you get people out of your cars, everybody benefits when there's fewer cars on the road. That's that's the nature of public benefit. But there are definitely concerns with Lyft slash Uber. It's just I feel like with the public benefit you it's fine to distribute it unevenly because all of us do benefit eventually. So but, but mm -hmm. I wonder if maybe when we talk about equity, so I don't know what the staff is when we say equity concerns. I don't know if we read it and it was in the memo and I forgot it, but I do think there's sort of equity, like the idea of some people not knowing how to use the, the apps and also um, this notion of like everyone else in Issaquah. So maybe we could talk about, I'm going to go ahead and say, it sounds like we don't have any additional criteria, but I think we should maybe take a moment um, and and I, I had hoped, and maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I had hoped that having a discussion about which criteria were most important, that some of this um, would take more form and be a little bit more substantive when we passed our recommendation on, even if it's to say no, it's for these reasons, and um, or go ahead. So you mentioned first last mile, and the, the you know cars off the road because of that. Um, because they don't have to drive into Seattle or whatever. But if they have a car, then they could also theoretically just drive the first mile and the last mile and park. And so that kind of brings up a question of. But it gets full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is maybe another whole different topic. But it brings up a, a question of 
if this is first and last mile, and I think that's that's great to, to narrow it down on, okay, this is actually what we're talking about, service for first and last mile. How are people currently getting there? Are there people that are not able to take public transit because of first and last mile limitations? Mm -hmm. How are they otherwise getting somewhere? And to try and address that, if, if the question is first and last mile. Well, the, the question about first and last mile is like, there's someone on Squawk Mountain um, who might have a kid and who might want to go to go to Bellevue or Seattle, um, but they're just not able to because they don't have a car, of course, and they they can't be taken to the trans center. I mean, I, I experience this a lot, um, and so having that shell there as the second option uh, to do that uh, would enable that kind of new, new, uh, new traffic on the transit. Um, so there's a whole bunch of situations, I think, where someone can't take a car or doesn't take a car. A lot of seniors. A lot of seniors. Yeah, a lot of seniors as well. And so um, I guess that's like the question about squat, which is how is it, each neighborhood has their different needs. And it's just it's tricky to weigh them off against each other. So is the question on the table still, do we have a recommendation or option to pursue? And do we have enough? I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced that having a discussion with the creature is not going to get us closer to that. Um, uh, so maybe we could take a couple minutes and just indulge me and we can talk about the criteria. So how about if we take Everyone just take a minute and put your um, top three criteria, and then we share those top three criteria. Of the criteria over there right now. Yes, because I don't think, the, my problem from the get-go has been that they're not, um, that they're all presented as if they're all equal. And I don't think that's true. I think some of those are more hot buttons. So there's, um, I don't know if you did that for me because I said I wanted to have people scribble, but there are um, sticky well, pads. Maybe over I'd there. like to add a criteria. Oh, well, that's what yeah. you can. We can reopen the, oh, the add criteria. <laughs> well, yeah, that was a great question to make me think of what criteria is missing. So I appreciate the question. Um, creating a new service, an entirely new administrative, administrative state that's needed to manage it. Do you not think city admin capturing that? That's. I was looking at it as, as more of a cost as opposed to a almost a more binary like one Do you mean because service? we're setting expectations or because of the actual just like hard and soft costs of starting something new? I guess I, I maybe don't really believe that the difference is as small as low and moderate. Ah. Let me stop sharing just for a second. I can tell you what my top three criteria are right off the top. Uh, no, I can't see them. Hold on, time out. I, I'm anxious to hear what you have to say, but I want everyone to be able to write that down. Um, what, what happened? He's okay. changing his screen, and I don't know why. There we go. Definitions. Oh, great. Right. Let's try to go. <laughs> oh, I see. No, we'll need a program. Would you say like startup in there, like inertia? I don't want to put words in just like once you, you're creating, you're going to, you're creating a whole nother thing to manage and a whole new service and all the unknowns that come with that. And once we, once the city sets forth on that endeavor, when things come up, they'll go deal with them because people will, you know, the some cost fallacy people will like, follow it. And I, I think that it's going to be much higher. And, you know, we're going to come across, you know, through contract negotiations, oh, we're already down there. We decided let's, let's go and do it. And so I, to me, that's a more of a different criteria. I'm open to that. And uh, I'm wondering if I think you're onto something, but I, I'm still a little vague in my mind. In Kuwait. Yeah, I mean, it's not. So. 
in my mind too. Okay. I feel like city administration covers that. Why don't we decide it covers that? Why don't we say yeah. what we mean by city administration is the hassle of starting something new and the fallacy. I love what you just said, the sunk cost fallacy. Yeah. I think, it's, it's, I think it's, it's more than just start up. It's just everything. Once, once you make a decision, they're going to proceed with it. Even when things come up, even when things are more expensive than expected. And, and also all of the other things, and that's why it's not just the cost element, it's all of the other things that come with having another service and the whole providing a unique service to two parts of the city. Why are you not providing a unique service, which is not equivalent? And that's what gets back that I keep harping on this. Are these actually equivalent to the, the, the metro option? So, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean this to be a two-way conversation. There's seven people on this. Um, I think that you're also getting at the thing that's, in a, in a way, it's um, it's the equity question because it's like it ties in very heavily with that, and I think there are a lot of unknowns that are certainly unknown to me about the difference between Palace and Scott Mountain and everywhere else in Issaquah, and you know, like who actually. Who, do, who needs the service? Who would benefit from the service? I don't think those are the same on each of these options. Yeah. And I think that that's the gap. If we're serious about equity. That's the gap we should be trying to close. Who needs it? Well, and Matt, Matt, sorry. Well, when it comes to demand and when it comes to who's using it, I feel like with transit service, you're really just, when you institute it, you're creating demand just like you're inducing like you it. Said, it yeah. so you, you never know who actually is going to be using it so you're creating a good service perhaps hopefully we are creating good service with this um, then you'll be inducing people to take it so just like anything with transportation related issues if you add a lane people are going to be using it it's going to go back to how it was uh, if you add a bus line people are going to start using it um, so I, I don't think we should be theorizing necessarily. I think we should try to try it out and see see how it works. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes perfect sense. Like that all, that methodology. But again, you know, when you look at the equity and the scalability, we're only talking about two neighborhoods versus you know if, if we as a city offer to those two neighborhoods, we're still not meeting the gap of needs elsewhere in the city. Yeah, and, and so I, I completely agree with you that that you know there's a new service will create demand. But what if we create demand and we're not actually addressing the current need we've created a, you know new new need effectively that we didn't have to keep keep satisfying and maybe that need are people that otherwise maybe had a car and so we're we're replacing a car with an Uber, and maybe that's better, maybe it's not. But then we have we actually addressed what's the, the current need, and we've done nothing for that. So I agree with you. I think there's also though it's it's more than just saying that new service is will create demand. I mean that's that's true with any uh, public service, and you know we could we had infinite money, but we just keep we. we be great to have Uber like service to everywhere, right? Everywhere on demand. Um, so that, that's where it's like, yeah, creating a service will create demand, but we are limited in what we can do. So I, I guess I would, my preference would be to figure out what's the current need, go in and try and address that first before we look at a new service that addresses that, that creates demand and, and therefore creates a new need and addresses that need. Can I can I add some maybe some insight? Um, so I during the process of kind of gathering this information up, I sent uh, Stephen to a city transportation planner a formal list of questions, which most of them I, I went through in the presentation. One of them that I didn't include was should we be considering this goes back to all the other neighborhoods getting jealous? Uh, like should we be considering the potential of other neighborhoods 
asking, I want that too. And his response was basically, right now we're looking at Spock and Talus, that's the direction from council. As a part of the transit study, the hope is they will include that question as they are engaging the different neighborhoods. So I don't know if that helps. I don't know if that makes it more complicated, but that is the response that I got from the plan. If I, if I lived in the Highlands, first thing I'd say is, why is why is Squawk so special? Why is Talus so special? Why aren't we getting the service that they have? Because truthfully, if you look at the service that's up there now, it's just passed through service. This is the way it's it is. passed through. That's all it is. Yeah, you have to drive. And, and they'll say, well, I live up at the top of Highlands up by that. It's the, you know. Yeah, why can't I get Uber down to the, um, to the, well, they would go or to, to a transit, transit stop yep. or to the hospital or something or the, the transit uh, parking ride up in the islands. So it seems I, like we each, I like the idea of us addressing the criteria and prioritizing it so that we can make a recommendation to council. So I don't lose my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but because they're they're ultimately responsible for creating the policy. We're giving a recommendation around the table that you know hopefully that we have consensus, we may not, but I think we should pose that question to council. You know, exactly. you've asked us to look at a very specific task which we've done, we struggled with, as you can, you know, as evidence around the table, but what a great conversation to have. Right. And now council, we're passing this on to you with this question for you to look at for all constituents or as you're making your policies. So I was gonna say that I think two themes that, we, that need to be embedded in our recommendation is we, you know, whatever we hopefully can come away with in the next 40 minutes, but also we have these concerns. We have this concern about do we really understand the need, and we have this concern about what's how about the other neighborhoods. Um, so let's finish the discussion about criteria. And, and isn't, let's that, see. isn't that equity? Well, that's what I was kind of isn't wondering. that equity for the other neighborhoods? It's, it's there's sort of two kinds of equity. There's equity in and outside, and, and yeah. Um, so uh, how about if we go ahead and just. Uh, do informally, then I, I want to hear, Dave, your, your uh, three criteria. So staff put this up, right? And I'm not picking at staff, okay? But I've been in transportation business for 53 years. I I don't agree with the coloring uh, and the color code because I think it's different. On the sh shuttle investment, you got cost to user per ride, green, right? That it's low. I don't see that at all. That's an additional fare. Perfect example. If you compare the transit low to 75, right? Perfect. But that's using an ORCA card and the transfer is built right in. There's no transfer there. So I see that as not being low. I see that as being an additional because they're going to have to pull out the ORCA card to pay for that next form of, I don't see that as being, well, I see that as being yellow or gold, whatever you, convenience is the same thing. I'm not sure it will, you, you'd have to do day one to show that you can be really convenient. And I don't see that, I, I, I don't, I'm sorry, but you're asking for honest opinions here, right? Yes. I don't see that. The same thing with the equity concern. If the, the equity concern to me would be just the fair, because they're jacking it up for people who really can't afford that fare, and it's an additional fare. Same thing with Uber and Lyft. Even if the city was to subsidize, I got to tell you, my belief is red on the shuttle and red on the alternative for cost of the city. The city's going to have to subsidize that Uber and Lyft. And I can sit, sit here and almost tell you verbatim for what I know that will never 
be in 2022. I don't believe that. I don't believe that in, this is August, right? I don't believe that. And I think if we make that recommendation to the council, they're gonna laugh at us because it's never gonna happen. And Barb D. Michelle, Barb and I work together at King County Metro. So she's, she knows. I got Carrie, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> we so wanna hear what you have to say. No, we, we really appreciate it, obviously. Um, age and experience like I, I am new to all of this within the last four or five years and I really appreciate I appreciate all of the insight that and I'll extend, extend this to everybody all of your insights so and especially yours I, I really appreciate it so feel free to be here I, I guess what I I see big picture Jerry is I'd really like to see us get the, the pilots back where we're not having the city to have to invest huge amounts of money and still keep that cost the user low. That's also gonna help us with the equity for folks who can't. As far as the Valley Floor, I think the service is pretty damn good. Cause I, I, I don't know if I, I think I told Cynthia, I do a program at the senior center called Metro with Dave, okay? And I teach the seniors how to ride the bus because a lot of them can't drive anymore and they don't want to drive in Seattle. That's equity. We've got other people who can't afford those, those uh, bus trips. That's equity. That's what we have to make as our goal. Um, I told you from Pasco that night, I, I'm pretty well locked on to what I believe I can tell the council and it will mean but the beauty is haven't we looked into uh all the alternatives we've looked at them are we are we there yet do we take a vote at eight o'clock you know what do we do to, uh to get there i'm i'm pretty well convinced uh, I heard that from my partner over here. That I'm pretty well convinced that I know what I think the recommendation to the city is going to be. This, that cost to the city is going to be a huge factor. So I think that benefit of, just bear with me, we can get through this, is that not only if they're interested in what we think, but why we think it as a group. And the why we think it is what this criteria discussion is about. So. Um, Will you share your criteria in three criteria? Oh, top three. We, were we writing them down? I'm sorry. That was the whole point. Oh my God. <laughs> and then there we'll see, you were like, let's take a couple minutes and let's talk about our criteria, but then we can't Oh, no, we can take a couple of minutes to, uh, oh, right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we did so keep talking about one I'll go to somebody else share your criteria. <laughs> okay. Um, only because I'm thinking Uber, I, I think the reliability would be a strong criteria plus you know, the cost to city per year and the cost to you to Okay, so my reliability and costs. And what about you, Micah? So number one is city admin, but as I've stated, I don't think it's low, moderate, moderate. Um, cost to the city per writer, uh, not cost to user per ride. The third one is equity, which is as Dave pointed out far better than I ever have, that, you know, that, that zero to two dollars is an addition to what they, because if we're talking to get to transit and therefore equity is really the better way to, to describe that. And I'd almost rather that the money part of it, we look at it to the cost to the city, because that way we're looking at the cost and benefit a little bit more. Uh, Uh, cost of city per year, only because I'm also thinking about equity for the entire For city. other neighbors. Yes, yeah, for yeah. other neighbors. Okay. And then reliability and cost to user per ride. What I'm looking at is convenience, uh, cost to user just in general, uh, so per ride, and transferability issues as well. 
uh, and uh, reliability, and then reliability. Um, just in general, I think just maximizing ridership, uh, making it a convenient service, good good frequency turnarounds, um, making sure it's not too expensive or too difficult to transfer the fare. Um, there's been some equity concerns that you guys have been talking about uh, when it comes to Orca cards, but I feel like you know, with the new changes that they've made, they've reduced the price of an Orca card, and the merchants are more widespread now uh, throughout the region. And so I'm not really convinced that Orca cards are a huge like burden on people. So I think just being able to tap once on the, on the, on the uh, Metro down to the Valley and tapping it again to go to Bellevue or Seattle, I don't think that's a huge burden. So cost of user and transferability issues, um, I think that drives my decision to which one of these options I prefer. Um, and reliability, just making sure the headways are reliable and uh, aren't likely to await. Do you think it's a burden to also have to use your phone, order an Uber, pay two dollars, and then go use your credit card to that, or just use your credit card? Well, the, the the transferability issue is kind of like what informs my informs my preferred alternative here, uh, which is the which is the metro. Option. Yeah, I just want to yeah I, I want to make sure I was understanding them the same way you were. Yeah. Because okay. I yeah I I kind of have the same question because I thought that um, it's not the issue that you need an orchid, it's the issue is that you have to pay two different. Yeah. The, the, but 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 you don't have to because if you, they, use if, if you have an orca list. if you have an orca card then so you Liz just going to take your orca card? card? No 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 I'm not talking about. I think we're on the same page. Yes. Yes. I said it different ways. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Orca wouldn't you. be available on those bottom two. Right. Yeah. They, that so would not be an orca That would be an additional fare. To, to so he, I think he was saying that the issue that, that makes it difficult a barrier wasn't owning an Orca card. The mm -hmm. issue was the two payments. Yeah. I don't think he was saying that or, okay. an Orca card is a barrier. Okay. I think he's saying. And that, there's like, there's something that's RRFP, regional reduced fare permit. Guess what? The kids in Seattle now, up to 18 years of age, write for free, mm -hmm. but they will in well, next month. They write for free next month, September. They write for free. That means they would write for free out here, which is something else that needs to be built in there. They're going to write for free in the county. In the county. Let's do that, Washington. For Metro. Like the county council voted on it. Won't be some transit. Some transit didn't vote on it, just Metro. And. Uh, that, that's going to be that's going to be some trip. Got to watch. It, Metro voted on it, not yeah, some trip. Okay, so if you're under eighteen, you pay the sound transit. Fees. Right. The uh, I can't remember. I think the fare on some transit for uh, anybody under eighteen is a buck twenty-five. That sticks in my mind, but I could be wrong. Um, But I, I have a problem with the colors here because I think they're different. If Dave Wagoner was doing this, they they would be different. Yeah. Um, my concern, my criteria, my criteria is number one, cost to use them. Okay. Second would be cost to the city, and third would be reliability. There's a lot of things that impact that reliability. Like I said. Uber Lyft here in 2022. Yeah. <laughs> Easter Bunny's coming. And soon it'll be Christmas. Yeah. All of those promises. Uh oh, that ain't happening. The other reliability thing you have to understand, I have a really good grasp on it, and that is drivers. Is a school district trying to get drivers offering two thousand dollars sign-on bonus. Um, Metro's trying to get drivers. This shuttle would be trying to get drivers, and they would have to start at the wage level. Uh, 
Metro's 37 bucks an hour. Okay, 37. And they're even willing to pay a thousand sign on bonus. But you got to work for 90 days to get that sign on bonus. Oh, that's that, 90 days. Huh? That, all of those things have an impact on reliability. Mm -hmm. Reliability because there are so many runs a day that Metro runs, they can't fill. They don't have the drivers. They cancel the runs. That's reliability. You're standing up waiting for a van to come up and tell us, what do you mean it's not going to be here? You know? Anyway. That's a quite systemic issue. So, across the board yeah. for everything. It, it, it's across the board for everything. So, and even truck drivers. So, you're going to say it, but I, I was saying it is systemic. Yeah. But I'm not sure how much it rules out or how much it should negatively impact what we're considering right now because it is so systemic. I um, see. You're saying that it's just like, I'm not sure how it varies, varies from one. How it varies from one locality to another. So. I guess if you met with Metro and they didn't automatically shut down this idea because, like to me, I'm like, well, why would they be offering pilot programs? If, I mean, like, I like, yes, like they're like hemorrhaging folks, they're trying to hire and scale up and stuff, but yet they are still offering. They didn't just cancel all pilots yet, like, yep. because of that. So that makes me like reasonably, yeah, encouraged. Yeah, I wouldn't say maybe like confident, but encouraged that, like, if they don't think it's as much of an issue as we are currently discussing, then it just waves my ears a little bit. Should I share mine? Yes, okay. <laughs> and I would have a tendency to believe the timeline for Metro, I don't think it'll be 2023, but I, I think it will be 2024 or 2025. Remember, the huge thing that's going to happen to our city, because right now from the flight, uh, Highlands to Seattle, 554, 214 for Mizzoquah, fill them up, and they go in. 554 is next, but as soon as they open that link to South Bellevue Park and Ride, 554 stops. And you're going to hear people say, man, I just want to take one vehicle to get in, even though there's no cost because you tap. However, the link is a, for seniors is about 50, but the link, but the 554 into Seattle. And then you don't even have that option anymore. It's gone, right? Okay, Erica, go ahead. Uh, cost to user, equity, and reliability. Uh, yeah, I feel like cost to user and equity are pretty. Yeah, I was just yeah. going to say to me they're very intertwined because if you can't afford to use the service we're providing, no matter what it looks like, then what that that is going to counter the if you will that they will come. <laughs> So I didn't share mine. So my number one was equity, and it's both equity with regard to the fare to the user, the two mm. two payments, two different payments, as well as the equity that we talked about about the other city, and then also the um, equity with regard to like the people who might need this the most might not have a smartphone or the right kind of phone. The reason that I said cost to the city per rider and equity, and when I think of equity, as it seems like most people are thinking cost of the user is part of that. The reason that those are, I, I think, should be the actual ones, not what they are now, is because you could go up or down on the city cost per rider right. to change that number. You could give people $5. Does that, and you could say for the Metro option, I'm gonna give people $5. So is that one then negative, and then the other ones are positive, or for the Uber one, you know what? We're going to give them $20. And, and taking an Uber, they get money in their, their account to use in another ride. All of a sudden, that's the, the best one for that. That's why those are those are permanently linked. That there is no way to look at the cost to the user without looking at the cost to the city. Because that's how that's making that happen. With the possible exception of Metro, because if the city does nothing, it's a set. Wait a minute, I live in the Highlands. I want the five bucks, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, um, we, I think that everyone is, thank you for indulging in that. I, I hope that it's useful. Um, 
I, I, I'm wondering about getting us towards a recommendation. And one of the things I'm worrying, I'm wondering about is, is there, are, are we still recommending, like we, we did like a straw poll last time. And I think, Micah, you pointed out that it's sort of a false like choice because ultimately, why wouldn't we, if Metro was a possibility, even if it wasn't sooner rather than, you know, and so I guess maybe I could start with the easy one. Is there, do we all agree that aggressively pursuing Metro until the words no come out of their mouth, never, ever, do we want to pursue that? And, and is that our strong recommendation? And is it even, I'm gonna go out on a limb and suggest that even if to sell it to Metro, it has to be split because one has so much more density than the other. Um, and so I'm seeing some nodding. Uh, we, we can take those one at a time, um, but yeah. you know, oh no, you 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 think we should go? I, 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 uh, we, you could always say that um, we would if Metro, you know, wanted to run a program for the city of Isambard or Squawk and Palace, fine. But I guess I'm a pessimist there. I don't see it happening. So that's why I was going to the Uber alternative, because that seems to be the better alternative. So, so that, that that's that's where I stood. And yes. So that that's where I really so stand because that's what John was saying in his presentation tonight, that oh yeah, um, Metro is looking into this, but the chance of that happening, the way I interpreted what he said is because of the density and the issues they had well, like three or four years ago, they were still exploring it. There were so many problems with it. I, I just was coming to the conclusion it wasn't really going to happen. But yes, you know, if Metro did say, oh, let's try a pilot program, then so maybe to be, be more happy. maybe to be more precise about it, is our recommendation to council that they direct staff to continue to aggressively pursue that to its logical conclusion, or are you of the opinion? And I I want to be make sure you're being heard. Are you of the opinion that it's not worth staff's time to pursue that aggressively until the logical end? You think it's been pursued? I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I just want to make sure that your comments are heard. Well, I, I guess. Uh, we should obviously definitely pursue Metro, see what they come up with. But I felt like at the same time, you know, council could, we could recommend this second alternative at this time, even if Metro uh, does come up with something that isn't going to work for us. Okay. But then there's all those issues with using Uber you know, right. reliability. So let's you know, that for one hard. second, because I think we might disagree on that. Is there anyone that doesn't think the council should direct staff to aggressively pursue the King County pilot to a logical conclusion? I would actually go even a step further than that. I would say that council, they should direct staff to look at, are there other levers they can pull or push in terms of money? Because if the alternatives are, if you pointed out probably much higher than 50 to 100k for the Uber option, but certainly high for the, the shuttle one. Is there any way, right? If not just staff pushing on, on Metro, it's if Metro comes back and says, no, okay, well, what about this? We shouldn't just say these are the only three options because there is the, there, there are always more options. And another option is to say, make that cost higher for the city. To, to achieve that op that outcome, and I stand by what I said earlier. If Metro does a, if we can convince Metro to do a pilot, they do a pilot and they're like, we are using it?" Then I don't want to spend money on I don't I don't want the city to spend money on Uber if Metro does a pilot and it's not being used. So that's just my opinion. Okay, so it seems like we're disagreeing on whether Uber should be pursued as a stopgap or in the meantime. I'm not hearing anybody disagree that we should be. So it sounds like, is this helpful? Is this what we're trying to yes. get to? Yeah, all right, yeah. Um, 
Okay, so I want to make sure everybody gets heard, though, and I don't want to have, um, I don't, revoting, I mean, I guess maybe I would, go ahead. The way my brain works uh, with, like, a lot of things in life is I am better, honestly, at, like, saying what I don't want instead of, like, maybe explicit what I do, and so is it more helpful for anyone if we, like, eliminate, because we really haven't talked about the, like, city-owned shuttle or whatever, like, that route, like, it hasn't come out much. It doesn't seem very popular. The cost is pretty high. We don't have the middle option. The middle option. I think yes. we, in our straw poll, like every that was just a no. It was a big. Okay. Would yeah, it be I helpful? agree. Yeah. Would it be helpful to like at least confirm that to council yes. and say like this was off the table for us as a group, and then the other two, we will keep talking about that right now. Like, but that's just for like my like process of elimination. It's like. So let's try something. Let's try actually. Um, is this too cumbersome to, to actually take? Uh, I would I would entertain a motion to take the middle one off the table uh, for our recommendation. Second. That I'm entertaining. I'm, I would entertain if somebody made that motion. Uh, motion to. I <laughs> well, we do have to clarify it so that they can ca capture it. So just go ahead and make that statement. I motion clearly. to take the middle option of shuttle invest in a third party system off the table. Second. All in favor? Okay, and nobody's opposed. I didn't miss anybody. Okay, great. There, we made a formal recommendation. <laughs> okay. Um, I would entertain a motion. For record, we're recommending against it. We're not taking it off. Of course, yeah. we don't have the power to take it off the table. Yeah. We're recommending against pursuing it at all. I guess I was wondering that. Um, I was did not uh, correct you because yeah, I mean, if I don't know, something weird happens in the next six months and we have to revisit it, I'm not gonna like, like I yeah, that's fine. Like, no, I think he just meant. I, I just meant. Just, I mean, we're, for the record purposes, we really should. Maybe a stickler, but we really should actually be a little more clear. We're not taking it off the table. We're recommending against it, and maybe we should even state a few reasons why. We're going to be formal about it and vote. So I don't know if you want to make a new motion. Do you want to I motion? still think we're getting the hang of this, so I think that that's a really good idea. I think we should do that. I think you should. I think I should do it, because you sounded like you had it all together. So I just spent too much time with Robert's order and <laughs> government documents and stuff. Uh, I think you're right, and I think we can all get better, and so we so should what, do that. So Robert's School of Order would say then we need to remove that vote and re-vote on the proper language. But who gets what? to decide that we remove it? Do we have to make a motion can, to remove yes, it? Yes, you can motion to strike it. Yes. Probably the easiest play. I'll entertain a motion to strike it. Second. Oh, you're not the... All in favor. Motion. Aye. Oh, yeah. I'm, Technically... Thank you. Yes. I missed that. I motion to strike the prior motion from the record or from, uh, I guess we're not striking from the record. I motion to strike the prior motion from as, as our uh, decision. Second. All in favor. Okay, no one voting. Okay, now we have a new motion, more, more, um, more clear. And I'm entertaining, I would entertain a, said, a, a Before we make that motion, let's just make sure we are all on the same page why we're recommending it against it. So we can state that in the motion. Too expensive. Fine. That would be the more. Uh, the, yeah, that drivers. We're never going to get the drivers. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. I, would, I would say that on that scale, looking at the colors are wrong. I would say that the cost to use should be the gold color because it's moderate. Uh, definitely high. It's going to be moderate. Convenience even moves to moderate because you don't have the convenience with a separate shuttle. And for sure, equity is not low. It's going to be high because it's going to be an additional cost for those people who can afford it the least. I thought that's what we were asking. No, no, you're right. I think walk. across the board, we think it's forced poorly. 
on all the criteria. Mm -hmm. And we think the ones in the chart don't capture how complicated it is and how difficult it is. And how the, much it the, the biggest thing that I have with this second option is because it is a third party, it's a separate service, it won't be tied in with the default network. And so that's just like my main concern. The uh, cost I'm, I'm, not convinced, sure. I'm not convinced that people are going to want to pay, you know, two bucks at the low end, I guess, two bucks, and then another two bucks at the transcend. Um, that cost just adds up. And so, yeah, that's like my the, biggest issue. The huge factor for me is the major cost of the city. It will right. be the highest cost. Of all three options, it would be the highest cost. The highest cost and least performance across the board. <laughs> all right, somebody want to make a new motion? I motion to no, recommend to the, recommend against uh, the middle option of the uh, shuttle invest in third party system due to uh, cost to both the city and user. We have equity concerns, the lack of transferability, and creating a whole brand new service. I second. All in favor? All right. Good for us. Yay. I think this is, this is important. We have been a little bit, we're a little out of practice, so this is great. Okay. So um, we have not, do we want to try to make a, a motion that, do we want to try to get clear on the first option? What we think that the city should do. I, I, I personally support. We that already idea. made that recommendation last time we met. Ah. Each one of us did. We, we voted on it. That's true. Thank you. Yeah. It, but is it in the same in light of the new updates? Mm -hmm. Is the question. Well, even more so. Yeah. But but did we? Didn't we still think that we should pursue the other one in the meantime while we're waiting? Yeah, that, that's what we said last well, session. That's why we were meeting today, right? Well, we yeah, we, we didn't get that far, and that's where we kind of started to break down. So if if somebody thinks that we don't need to go back and revisit, maybe we, we could take a motion and say we well, we don't even have to make a motion. We could just agree that we have a similar position. Even more so with the. Update. I'm wondering if the council is going to ask us to do the same thing that we did with the middle option and say why that bottom option isn't appealing to us. I think we should reuse the remaining of our time to come to some consensus about the third option because that's where we disagree and we Great. should just rely on our previous information, a previous discussion for the first option. We, we can also, depending on the outcome of the third one. Take a final motion of their final recommendation. Okay. So um, let's talk about the third one. And just as a straw poll, not a motion or a vote, just um, who thinks it should be pursued in the meantime on a parallel path with Metro? No, sorry, that's not the way you were. What do you tell me? What you what? Well, it, it, well. Originally, it was like a 2026 timeline, right? And so it did make sense to pursue Uber. But if we, but if Metro is working on this now, right? Um, so we would like to hear the results from Metro, even though John said it wasn't really likely something was going to come of it. I do want to clarify. It's not that I don't think it will. I just wanted to make sure that you all realize that we don't know. Like it's very like maybe you know it's kind of in that murky zone. <laughs> Jerry, don't but I, but I it's not. It's not a no. I heard that you had interest in the Uber option. Should the Metro option not work out? And so, well, I disagree with that. Uh, with with pursuing Uber, should that should the outcome of the group be we want to pursue Uber? Because that will take time. If we just wait, then and then they say no in twenty twenty four, we're starting in twenty twenty four. So I think it's still worthwhile for us to discuss um, whether 
we would also recommend that they start working down the Google path at the same time. I think that's well put. Yes. And I'm curious what you are. We're still discussing. We're not, yeah, so this isn't, we're not making a motion. Right as now. a neutral. I would want more details on that and how that would look like uh, as an interim option. But we don't want staff to spend a ton of yeah. details if we're not supportive of it. So I think we. this is the point yeah. where we. I, I can right, be but, supportive, but it's just like I want to know kind of the framework of what right, but, that function. But staff could pursue, you know, Micah was saying it wouldn't be that helpful. But I would like to know who is really interested in this. You know what residents are interested in this on Slack and on Talus, and even I was just like, why is it limited to those two? Why can't right. the, the, Uber the, the Highlands? Why can't they the Uber option? Why can't they anywhere? do? Yeah, why can't they uh, solicit all of those communities and even? If you add the Highlands in, then the cost of the city is going to go up. Even more. Stop <laughs> So I want to know why uh, you have. So you, you're you don't and even it, South Coast strongly. You know right. Yeah. And can you tell us more about why? Sorry. Well, I live in South Coast. I think I'd like to have that option to be able to get an Uber to the transit center. Well, yeah. so especially if the city's giving me five bucks to do it. No, no, the city's not going to do that. Oh, really? then I'm not interested in that. So, so I am strongly opposed for several reasons. Um, one is if we are being asked for just these two neighborhoods, do we recommend it? I get that you know, some people think we're being asked and, and we shouldn't think about the rest of it, but I disagree. I think that the point of having this board is to think about things like that. And when I think about where that's gonna lead, I think that's going to lead to you either have to do it for the entire city or you're going to have to shut it down and neither of those achieve the objective if they want to do it for the entire city well they should ask the whole city if the whole city wants to pay for everyone to get subsidized uber service and i can tell you how that's going to end up um, can't predict the future i can't predict that one though uh so that's that's one big part of it is I think that we do have the obligation or the right or the responsibility to think about some of the bigger picture, the, the next steps with this. And so I have that concern. Um, I also do not believe I, I agree with you, Dave, about the, the cost. I think it's way higher than is is listed here. And I think it will spiral out of control. And once it's started, it's going to go there. I have serious concerns about a partnership with a specific company. I am certainly a very much a capitalist, but this is the city, right? And that should be separate. And so I, I have I have those those concerns with that. And then I have a huge amount of concern about the the whole, you know, the equity, cost per user, cost per rider, all that mixed together. Are we actually addressing the current need or are we just creating a new service, an entirely new service? And my understanding was there, the city council has a belief that there is a current need, that a current gap that needs to be addressed. Are we actually addressing that? I don't think we are. I think we're just creating, a, that we just created a new service with new demand and we haven't solved what we want to solve and we created back to that first point. You got to do the whole city, you got to do that. Though. So. And I would echo everything you said, except I believe reliability for Uber is going to be red because I don't think they have the people or the drivers out here to get us red. And, and it kind of rises to scalability in mm -hmm. another sense. I'm not sure if I'm just going to say definition of scalability here, but uh, as you were mentioning, uh, SOVs, you know, single occupancy vehicles, they don't scale well at all. And so, um, you know, shuttles are just, they're just better at providing more service to more people, you know, particularly to a denser neighborhood like Talos. And so, yeah, I mean, you keep, we have a bunch of people taking Ubers, um, you know, that cost is going to go significantly up. 
good to eat. I didn't prep, rank these in my prioritizations, but they are important factors. Is anybody, are, are you moving on your position or do you even maintain your position? Because we, we want to capture that if that's, I'm not sure. Well, I I, I don't think we know about, about enough, know of not about the Uber or, or Lyft service, right? So it wouldn't hurt for, you know, the, the city to, to look at it a little bit more. And to learn and what? To, to learn about how it would operate, um, to determine. Super dodgy when you talk to them. Yeah, or like they just wouldn't give them a lot of the data that we wanted. So unless, what, what, unless we sign an MOU with them? But that was an MOU from Highland, right? Yeah, that's a good bait. As, as the city talks to the Arizona City Transportation Department, I have not said this one. So I would recommend that if we do anything more with Uber, I would recommend that that would be the, the next step, Uber slash road. Can other cities try to reach out to them? So would the recommendation then be to have the staff research that some more? I think we're divided on this, and I think yeah. that's we should capture that. I, I, go ahead. Well, I, I, yeah, we, we are divided on this. And I was just saying, you know, I don't know if, if it's possible to divert the focus or if if the metro would need its full full staff time um, to try to accelerate that timeline. Um, not sure how the staff could manage both of those things without delaying the metro a little bit more, but just some concern there. So it depends on how long no, I like, we're spending. That's something that hasn't been brought up is that if we like do you recommend like, hey, can you pursue both at like Uber really does a stop gap in case Metro falls through. Is that even like feasible for time? Or or they'll like not sleep. That's it would be a lot. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's formal not, entry like, into the record. Yes. Even our, like criteria that we were evaluating that that maybe should be. Well that was sort of what the I guess the city admin. Yeah. yeah. So so we have two to, it sounds like we have, we're, we're in a shades of gray on the whether or not what to do with the Uber question at this moment. Micah has stated some reasons, and I want to get back to you, but I just want to capture what I'm hearing. I personally am becoming fairly convinced, and I would, I would be in favor. I would be in the camp that says we, we don't put any resources because we don't need to hear from Uber or Lyft about the things that he's bringing up, and I think he's bringing up some really good points that I'm becoming convinced about. So. There may be a camp. I'm not sure how many people uh, are agreeing with Micah's general position, which is that it's it's not something we should be pursuing at this time for some kind of policy and larger reasons. The other, the other, there may be some people that think it can't hurt to just learn more information. And so I guess I'd like to know, hear from Christy and um, maybe Dave, where you fall. I, is there any any other? Sentiments besides what the two I just said. I want to make a motion that I think will capture. I think we'll capture at least I don't know eighty percent. So let me just state it first, and then I'll actually make the motion. So when I do make the motion, it will be basically that we recommend staff. We recommended this to, to the city council that staff pursue the shuttle option, including looking at. What other levers we can play to make that happen? And I would ask that staff sometime doesn't have to be next time we meet, a couple couple times from now, come back to us after having reached out to um, another city that's done this, so that we as a transportation board can learn about it. At this time, we are not recommending it, but we are at least curious, and it's something that. It would be beneficial for us, and we can also that information could be shared with the city council as well. I'm going to make that motion now. Um, so I, I motion that we recommend to city council to pursue 
the shuttle option as the option uh, and look at any ways to, to achieve that, um, including uh, possibly uh, more uh, funding towards that, that option. We believe that that is uh, the most equitable option and you know has the, the, the best reliability, the best tie-in with the other systems that are out there, the lowest actual cost to the user. Um, we, I guess I can make that a separate motion, another part of it. Point, point of order, sorry, Micah. I thought we already dealt with the shuttle option. Yes, the metro. So, so I, I, oh yeah. He's so not talking about metro. third party shuttle. He's talking about metro. 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 Oh, sorry. I, Thank you. Yes. I was, to, to be I'm clear, going, yeah, it's a shuttle wait for metro, but I mean metro yeah, shuttle. And I was just going to recommend that you be clear about uh, the, the metro. So yes, to be, to be clear, the motion shuttle. is the metro the option, the first option, the metro option, okay. as as the option. And so that's the end of my motion before I hear a second or not. I, I'm going to make that other thing as a separate motion because I just want to be clear that that is, this is the recommendation we're providing to the council. Separately, I just want to say, I don't want that in the recommendation because it kind of muddies it, makes it not clear what we're recommending. What was the first? Sorry. I, I'm going to second, gonna, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, second, second, second motion. motion would be the Uber that passed that way. Yes. Go to search tomorrow. Yes. I will second that motion um, because I, I I think just tying it into the rest of the system, the rest of the region, um, for the card is just like the best, the best approach for now. Um, and while I think Going to the lift routes is a pretty neat idea to explore. Um, not sure if it would need, if we should be dedicating staff resources to that, uh, or we otherwise could be trying to work harder at trying to get this in place of Bob. So, yeah, that's a reason to put that. All right, there's a motion, the motion is seconded. Um, would there, would there be a length of time where we wait to hear for a response from Metro? Could we give them a time? Let's keep that can down the road. We're just an adult volunteer advisory board, and I think we probably, <laughs> if it's okay, I think we should. We've probably done enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Is there any discussion that hasn't already happened? Okay. So all in favor of that motion that Mike has. That, yes, okay. Okay, it sounds like we're all in agreement. Some took longer <laughs> than others, but um, that's great. Yeah, motion carries. Okay, so, so. Point of order then. So once we make this recommendation, I'm working on that staffing calendar. If we wanted to come back to relook what staff may have found out, when would be a time? An update time to come back to us. Uh, yeah, um, I actually have that question myself because we are, we are technically scheduled to go to mobility and infrastructure in September, and, and so that's why I want to make that's why I made that as one motion. Yeah, it's just separate. And you, you would want us to not delay for that. For no. And and I was actually thinking about that. I, I don't need that. We don't need a motion to ask you to take a vote. You know, for help us with some information, right? So we can just ask, and it, and that's why I made that clearly separate. We have our recommendation. Our recommendation is the metro option. We as a board can be interested in learning more. I think we should. I think we should make sure it gets transmitted to council that we have concerns and questions about Uber Lyft, and are not and and and. How do I want to say we are concerned about spending even staff resources pursuing it, but we are curious. So I think they should know that. I would agree with that. And I don't know that it has to be captured in a motion, but I think that you you guys have heard this. I think we're all coming to a position. You're shaking your head. I don't know why. Um, it's just that the big issue for the city is. Uh, 
this is only for Talus and Squawk. And the minute that gets out there, that that's even an option, it's going to really be a whole different thing for the council to have to deal with because the, the, I don't believe South Cove and Highlands is going to sit still and be. But that's the no, council. That's, 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 we're I mean, just kicking it to the council. We're not it, the council. It sounds, okay. I'm like halfway joking, but halfway we like they did come to us and say, like, we want you to look at this neighborhood specifically. And if for somehow like this conversation we're having and the recommendation we give suddenly explodes Issaquah and people show up to the city council with horse and fish forks, that's not us. Yeah. And they, you know. Okay. No, not us is definitely council, but I do think if we have a concern, we can make a recommendation yes. right. and yeah. share that with them for their, their mm -hmm. consideration. I'm going to turn to staff now and say, do you feel like you have enough of, you've heard that enough, or you could include it in your transmittal, that we have concerns about that? Yes, yeah. and about that, if we can talk about how we are going to review um, I was um, going to say that in the chair report. Oh, we sorry. No, we can talk about it now. Um, the well, I just don't want to take us off. So our, our, I feel like we've landed somewhere pretty good, and I don't feel the need to make a motion on the, the Uber Lyft. And any of these motions, they all get captured in the transmittal, which we want to talk about in um, next if we're ready to do that. And we are running a little bit over time, and I'm very hard for about finishing on time, but. If we could just, I think we could wrap up pretty quickly. Um, one of the things that I, Julian and I talked about with and with um, Andrea Snyder, Deputy Administrator Andrea Snyder, was that sometimes, um, and Julian's much better about this than I am tracking like what materials are going to council, but I wasn't even aware that our information, our feedback is getting into their memos as they bring stuff to council. And I've never even seen what that looks like. And so, um, is this what you're talking about? What we're talking about yes. today? Yeah. And so one thing that we could do is, at minimum, I think we should be copied on those. And yes, of course, it's public material, and we could go and dig for it. But I think that should be the tab should be copied whenever those things go out. But I also wanted to know if you guys were open to the idea of chair and vice chair getting a chance to review it. And maybe we, I envision like a 48-hour turnaround. If they don't hear back from us, it gets shipped, because I don't think we can hold them up because they have their deadlines, but, um, and I, we didn't even have a chance to talk about it after the meeting we had this morning, but this idea that we get to look at it and make sure it captures what we all thought, and, um, but it can't really be the whole tab because then you're starting another meeting. Yeah. Right. But if you guys are comfortable, we could, so the really the only two options are we continue doing it the way we've been doing it, um, but we just get copied on it, or we ask the chair and vice chair to have a look at it um, before it goes out. That's fine. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Have to do two look at it. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth trying out and seeing how it works because this, we're kind of stepping into a new model of how we're working together. And, you know, we're going to, for lack of a better term, still kind of making sausage as we're working our way through versus before we were getting a lot of updates and mile wide. <laughs> So you guys are comfortable with that, um, and can we make a request that you send us when you do send the memos, copy tab, when you send them off to council that you copy tab, are you yes. allowed to do that? Yes. Yeah. And that way, that's a check and balance for this entire board as things get transmitted to council. It also gives you the heads up that it's going to go to council, so if you feel like attending, and also if we are reviewing it, you can come to us and say, I don't think you're doing that. A good enough job you missed this you missed that or or you can say you know you get to you get to check our work basically just that process has to be after the fact because of the opma issues uh, okay awesome um well i mean i i think we did it i think um you asked a question about the work plan and could we look at it again and i think that um we have to let them figure out when they want mm -hmm. to bring it back and i think maybe after um, after council, after it's presented to council, we can maybe get an update. Um, but we don't set the work plan, the staff doesn't tell us what they need advice on, so I didn't want that to necessarily us. But we, yeah, we'll definitely want to hear back. 
great. Well, okay, you guys may just slog through it very patiently. Um, I will say I was starting to get, um, I wanted a robust discussion. That's what we really wanted to get to, but it was starting to get a little unruly. And if it continues like that, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable. So I've like, in the past, we used to just like, you know, when you want to say something, you turn your thing. So I might kind of, we'll see how it goes. I, I really like the organic banter, but at some point you get only the loudest person, you know, gets to talk and people like wait their turn and they wait their turn indefinitely. So we, I'm just heads up, we may. We just start going to something a little more, you know, just organize the discussion. So if we just bit. turn it upside down, that means we're out of it? No. <laughs> that means you're in stress. <laughs> Your neighbor gets you over the head. <laughs> but that, that was good. Um, yeah, so I think we're ready to, I don't know if you have anything to say about the what's going on. No, yeah, it's basically because uh, we did submit a uh, work, work, work plan, but we did this changing as we go um, and, and also we have mentioned um, I know in the last meeting we have mentioned the possibility of a joint meeting with the um, mobility, mobility infrastructure. and infrastructure committee um, but uh, there has been discussions with council and they are trying to define how the interaction between city council and committees and boards and commissions are going to look like so uh, that might uh, most likely, we will not be ready for September meeting to do that, uh, but we will uh, look at the work at the board work plan, and you will be seeing updated for, uh, for the next meeting. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'll try pretty quickly. Uh, last week, we opened bids for new board pedestrian bridge race intersection. And the, uh, the bids were really after the bid opening, we presented to council on Monday because with a budget request, because uh, there was a huge amount of requests that we were asking for council to be able to uh, accept that bid. And we are glad and happy that city council did accept. Uh, our budget request, and so we are building that project. So that's really uh, great news. Also, I just sent an email about a few hours ago about the ADA transition plan survey that's included in there. Uh, so please submit your feedback on that survey when you can. I did speak last week about the ITS survey, but then when I realized that it was closed, so I could not submit the uh, send the email. That, that's why uh, you didn't see an email for the ITS results uh, for the ITS survey. Uh, and lastly, um, next Tuesday we will be also presenting to council about our results from the open house virtual open house that went for Newport Way but for, for the project from Maple to Sunset. And we will be uh, presenting, I'm sure one actually will be presenting to council about uh, the results from that survey, uh, for that open house and presenting, uh, hopefully getting into a design concept of that project. Mm -hmm. I really didn't ask anything else to do. I was just gonna say thank you. Um, I feel really lucky and honored to be the first in-person process and uh yeah I, I love all the, the suggestion discussion and i feel like we we have a really we'll be able to, to put together a really good um presentation for the infrastructure council so thank you thank you to each of you for participating and being here thank you both for all your work mm -hmm. yeah, love your work definitely uh, I don't have a chair report. I was just going to bring up that um, transmittal question that we already covered. I don't have another chair report. Did you request a chair report? I don't usually do vice chair, but I guess just make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, and then, does anybody have any other business or announcement? We will not be meeting later this month. We might not end up meeting in September since it was going to be the joint session. We're not sure. Yet. Well, yes, we will we'll discuss that uh, okay. during our vice, our chair checking. Okay. Is there a possibility of that 
be like if we begin September, it'll be our regularly scheduled third Thursday, whatever we're on, or it wouldn't be a special day. Yes, it is still on the calendar, unless, we, unless for a reason we, for attendance reason, maybe we need to reschedule, uh, then we will call for a special day. But we still on the calendar on our normal scheduled meeting. I should have my hearing back because I don't want to make you all jealous. But tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday, I will be working at the Museum of Life with the Blue Angels. Oh, so <laughs> those new F 18s, they're really, really loud. So it'll be fun and we'll probably get some sunburn. Seafair, don't you want that? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, with that, I think uh, we're adjourned. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. So, um, would I get my ultimate?